but uh, thank you, Gail. Um, kia ora tato. Um, I, I was planning to stand down the front there so I could see my slides, but because we're filming at the moment, that's, that was just going to be a little bit more uh, difficult. Um, so coming back to that knowledge to action cycle, and, and as I think you've heard from Claire and heard from Gail today, a lot of what uh, really guides Supri's work is around increasing the use of evidence to better inform policy decisions but, and, and practice decisions. So that's the aim of our work, and I guess um, the knowledge to action cycle helps us formulate and position a lot of our work. In this case, I'm talking about um, a review of parenting programs. I'm not going to talk about the results of that. I'm going to talk about the process because that's really what we're focusing on during this session. Um, this uh, review, um, I think, will position in terms of the knowledge creation space. But later on, I'll come back to you know show you that that's only part of what we do. Bringing that work around the circle is is equally important if we're going to have an impact. Now, um, this work was completed, the technical aspect of it, let's say, was completed in early 2014. And I just want to give some context because I think it's really important in terms of having an impact in the policy space, it's really understanding the context for the work that we're doing. And that's about you know, who is that customer in the middle there? What do they need? Um, what's the question often is, is poorly framed and there needs to be some discussion or dialogue about that. So in terms of the context and just you know, going back a few years, um, some of you may remember the, the, the ongoing concern about the increase in um, child, youth and family notifications, is straight, putting a, a stress on the system. Now we know that part of that is due to changes in police reporting uh, processes around family violence. But it, you know, there was a substantial increase in the number of substantiated uh, notifications that needed further action. Internationally also there was a focus on how we do um, in comparison to other countries and you can see there the black line is the New Zealand um, rate of child mortality, 10 to 14 year old child mortality and the other um, one because this is an Australasian conference is for Australia. So you can see New Zealand is, is positioned quite um, high in that international comparison. Now that, those concerns and a lot of the debate um, led the government of the day um, to put out a discussion paper in 2011 and um, they called for public consultations around that and they analysed those and produced a um, white paper and a plan of action. Some of you again will be familiar with those reports. <coughs> And that uh, called for a restructuring of the child protection system, um, introducing children's teams, calling for earlier intervention, more of a focus on those that were below the statutory level of intervention. But there's, two, there's probably a couple of other contextual pieces of information for this work. One is the, the current government's focus on better public service targets. So there are also targets around reducing assaults on children, uh, increasing participation in ECE, increasing immunisation rates, reducing offending. And parenting programmes potentially have an impact on both the maltreatment aspect that I've referred to with the uh, plan of action, but also on those other um, targets. And coming back to a point that Gail made, Parenting programs are funded by a number of government agencies. So health fund some parenting programs, education funds parenting programs, the Ministry of Social Development fund parenting programs. So there's a cross-sector aspect to this. And there's a really important aspect of the degree to which there is coordination across government agencies in the planning, the selection, the implementation of those programs. And finally, there's uh, increasing ministerial uh, demand for evidence for the effectiveness of spending. And I think Richie also talked about, you know, that limited resources, where do we spend our limited resources? What's the evidence that we're spending them in the right places? Now, the plan of action and the white paper contained a w one line that said, um, by the end of 2013, 
Superu will review and report on the effectiveness of parenting programs. So that's our question. And when I looked at that, knowing um, that there had been reviews of parenting programs in the past, not having a, a, a good understanding of why we were being asked to, to, to answer that question, I could see possibilities of us heading off and doing a review, delivering that review, and being told we'd gone completely down the wrong track. So we engaged in quite a bit of consultation. We went around talking to policymakers within government. We talked to researchers as well. Um, we convened an advisory group of policymakers so that throughout this work, we could be putting up our ideas to them, clarifying aspects of the review, and really just scoping it out so that we, we knew, one, we would be able to supply the right information to the right audience in the right time frame. And if we weren't doing that, then it's highly likely that we would be producing another parenting report that was sitting on top of, I could just add to the pile that I had on my desk. Um, so that, that, I really got to emphasize that aspect, um, is really getting a good understanding of the policy context, getting, and, and policy makers don't necessarily, uh, aren't necessarily able to provide that um, themselves if they haven't been actively involved in, in formulating that work, and often you'll get different perspectives across different agencies. So it is challenging, it is challenging, but it's well worth doing, it's, for, it's really important. So in the end, we had a limited time uh, span to do this work, and we commissioned a rapid evidence review from the Parenting Research Centre in Melbourne, who had the skills and the expertise to do that. We also draw, drew on a lot of the systematic reviews that exist, and on the clearing houses um, that you know do a lot of that work in terms of looking at the evidence and collating the evidence. Um, but we also took the opportunity to to really raise a number of issues that have an impact on the effectiveness of parenting programs. So those around engagement and retention, around implementation, so it's not just what works, it's what works for whom and in what circumstances, so bringing that aspect into it. Of course, um, programs for Māori and Pacifica parents, very important that we have an understanding is, is do these American programs, will they work with those family groups given their representation in New Zealand? And also um, introducing you know, some of the emerging literature around common elements or um, common components approaches. Now that, as I said, that review was completed. Um, so you can go to our website, you can get the report which has the details, it has all the references, it has all the citations and the methodology, but we also produce a range of other products. So we have uh, What Works Evidence Brief, so they um, concisely summarise the results of that review. Um, we also have research summaries, of course. We have dissemination at conferences like this. Um, and we also had a cross-agency workshop. So we brought together the agencies that were involved in purchasing parenting programs and got them together. And, and, and the challenge that Gail made when we produced this report was, well, what are you going to do with it now? So putting it back on the policy, you've asked for this report, here it is, what are you going to do? How can we help you use this? And that's really important. It's not just saying, right, here's a report, that's the end of it. Definitely not. And as you can see, we're bringing that evidence around the evidence to action cycle. Um, we also had evidence to action um, conference where we brought over Robin Milden from the Parenting Research Centre who had done some of this work. And having an international and really compelling speaker can, can have a really significant impact as well. Now, um, just, just finally, because I, I have limited time here, um, I guess the, the, the issue in terms of having an impact is around how well you can align the policy formulation and policy decisions with the production of the research evidence. So understanding those cycles, particularly budget cycles, for example. So if we are producing a report that is going to inform actual real world decisions, then it's important that doesn't happen after considerations around budgets. But you, you know, sometimes, particularly in this piece of work, we delivered for the policy audience and the policy audience were ready for that. We were going to be delivering for a practitioner audience, but they frankly weren't ready for that work at the time it was produced, and we had to we have to delay on on 
providing that to them. So getting those cycles and getting those cycles lined up again is, is uh, a real challenge around this piece of work. 